I welcome you to the God Life blog in the name of Jesus. In God Life blog, what we share are teachings of Apostle Joshua Sermon and Pastor George Izumwa. In this blog, we share for you to grow spiritually. We teach you how to pray for those of you that don't know how to pray. Prayers for favor, prayers for wealth. And we guide you spiritually because we love you so much and we want you to grow. So what you are supposed to do for us is please like our videos, share our videos, subscribe, tag people to watch our videos. You can share our videos to blogs, you can share our videos to Facebook, you can share our videos to Twitter. Please make sure that you turn on post notification for our videos. Thank you and please watch the video. My pastor called me and sat me down. He said, just sit down. He said, a woman without saying a word has more than 90 things she can do to keep a man uncomfortable. He said, when you get married, you'll find out that a woman can just be sweeping the house and that sweeping is flogging you. You're not hearing me. Just sweeping the house and singing to herself is so tally. <laughs> While she's doing that, bullet is passing through your head. Wham, wham. He said, when people tell you they didn't say anything, don't believe them. There are some things attitude says that mouth didn't say. Now, there are people with passive, aggressive behavior. They carry it. If you are like that, you say, uh, I, I didn't do him anything. No, I didn't do him anything. But you did worse. Somebody offended you. You acted as if you forgave. But what you have done in the last one month of your forgiving, it would have been better if you didn't forgive. Have you met people like that before? Please, I'm talking to human beings. Have you met people like that before? What the way the person has treated you, it would have been better if you didn't forgive. It would have been better the person set you down and flog you well, well. So you can know it is over. Are you with me? You know, when we were younger, when we didn't understand grace, anytime we sin and nothing bad has happened, we get worried. They say, make God beat us first too. And this one he's keeping quiet. We don't know what he's planning. <laughs> Let him not be doing exam. God will come. <laughs> Before he gives us zero with two eyes. I told you many years ago of a man. This is many years ago now. Don't bring it to today. Are you with me? <laughs> this man. The, the wife was traveling to America. Was going to the airport. He took the wife, went and dropped at the airport. And they called for boarding. The wife went and boarded. So he drove off. Because, of course, he has boarded, so they're going to fly. They're finishing the aircraft to fly. He has started coming home. Maybe because he has another agenda. I don't know. So he has left. Started coming home. Unfortunately, while the aircraft was preparing to taxi, the pilot noticed something an anomaly. So he said it won't fly until it's corrected. They tried to correct it and found that it was a major problem. So they said, no, they can't leave today. Ask everybody to disembark. Our guy has gone home. As he was going home, he picked his girlfriend and went to his own house with his girlfriend. That time, there was no phone. It was this zero, not nine not. You know, not nine not. That one that looks as big as a man's hand. You hold like this. If you go to a bar, you hear them carrying it like this. Are you hearing me? The man didn't have a phone then. So he's gone back home. The wife couldn't reach him to tell him the flight was cancelled. So the wife took an airport taxi and came back home because she has key, unlocked the door, enter house, everything by <laughs> Say, 
sister saw them in the bedroom. And she just walked out and closed the door. The man saw the wife. Came out. And she didn't say a word. The girl packed her things and run. She didn't pursue the girl. She went to the kitchen and said, making food for the night. The man said, lie, lie. near the food. He was expecting her to get angry, make quarrel, shout, not one word. In the night, she actually came to the bedroom and lay down. The man didn't sleep. He was awake until morning. Was awake. Every small thing will check around to see whether she's holding knife. <laughs> make, make the knock cut my neck on the door. He waited. I'm not joking, no. The next day, she didn't say what. Just kept quiet. Two days, three days. She he traveled to go and report himself to his in-laws. <laughs> he called the mother and the father of the girl, sat down with them. He said, This is what I did. He said, but I don't want to die. He said, your daughter has not said anything. I don't know what's going on in her mind. But if I die, is your daughter home? He said, let her do something. Let me know she's angry. He said, why are reporting himself to pastor? Reporting himself to everybody. He said, tell her to do something. If she uh, wants me to leave, I'll leave. If, whatever. At least since three days, she has not said anything. The woman said, what is there to say? Brothers and sisters. But you see, there are people like that who will not say anything. But when they kochuku you, <laughs> passive aggression. These people are aggressive, but in a passive way. Are you with me? Okay, let, let me explain to you a little bit about passive aggression. Have you ever met some friends when you were in school that you are praising somebody and they say, ah, oh, he's great, but you know they don't want to criticize what is going on in a direct way. They just want to come from behind and puncture. What I'm saying is that true? That's called passive aggression. And there are a lot of people that carry it in relationship. You have a big breakthrough but you have something happening but if you have that it's a relationship killer am i talking to somebody here and all that is conflict avoidance just like the woman i talked to you about the person doesn't want to face a relational conflict somebody says anything or does something what do you do you don't want to say no my husband my wife my friend no, I don't accept that. You avoid the conflict. You will never say no. Never, never say no. And then deep inside you, you are boiling. You are boiling. If they take a pot of yam, it won't take 30 minutes. You'll be done in your chest. But while you are there, you are shaking your head. No, conflict avoidance is not good. I don't believe in shouting and screaming and quarreling. But I believe that if I'm sitting down and you're saying something that is not okay and we need to talk about it, we should talk about it. If it's not at that moment, at another time. But never be afraid of conflict. It's a relationship killer. Let me tell you how we, why it kills relationship is this. You see, there is so much negative that your heart can handle. Look at it this way. You see, if somebody does something to you, you keep quiet. Does something again, you keep quiet. Does something again, you keep quiet. Does something again, you keep quiet. Something is building up. A day comes, he does something very small, and you explode. And people are saying, is it not a small thing? It's not the small thing you are reacting to. It is the build up in your heart. For people, do you understand what I'm talking to you? That's why conflict avoidance destroys relationships. 
That's why you see people. Now, is, is it this morning that is breaking the home? Is it this morning that the woman returned home late in the night? Or she didn't answer his call when she traveled? Is it the thing that there is some things that have been going on for years? I, I will leave that. Am I talking to somebody here? That's what you need to handle. You are not an intercessor if you do not understand the burden of the territory. What are you praying over? Any young man you see who is always depressed because he has no money, who is always depressed because things are not working, is not a man.